What's up guys, it's Ryan and you're watching Ryan Vision. If you haven't already, make sure you like the videos and subscribe for more. Check out projectzj.com for all the videos. And there's a link on projectzj.com to the Instagram, which is absolutely blown up. I think we're up to over 15,600 followers now. So definitely get on there. It's a direct link to my cell phone. Basically, every picture I take of this thing, whenever I'm working on it, doing something to it, uh, it's on there real time. So check that out. Today, uh, I know it's been a while since I've done any update videos, so I'm going to go through a couple things. I'm going to uh, try to do just one thing per video. So in this one, I'm going to go over the Iron Rock Off-Road Fuel Tank Skid Plate. Extremely beefy and 100% bolt-on. So if you have, you know, even if you have the factory ZJ Fuel Tank Skid, you know, that's, that's cool. It's way better than nothing. But this is way heavier, trust me. I had the um, the normal fuel tank skid on here, just the factory one, and it's super thin, it bends easily, and also it, uh, it had clearance issues, you know, with long arms in the rear, because you push the back axle back a little bit, and the um, track bar bolt was actually catching on the lip of the um, fuel tank skid, the factory one. So we ended up having to cut it and everything. Well, obviously, since Iron Rock Off-Road knows what they're doing, they're the ones selling the long arm kit that I have. They made this so it has zero clearance issues. Also, it's made of 3 16 laser cut steel, okay? Super thick. You can see the thickness right here. Way thicker than the factory fuel tank skid. It is solid. It's not going to bend on you. It's going to protect the fuel tank skid when you're off-roading. You know, I guarantee you, as thick as this is, you could uh, set the whole Jeep down right on a rock in the middle of this thing, and it would just slide right off it, so no problems there. And over here is where I was talking about. There's no trimming needed to clear the track bar bolt. They did real nice close clearances to the fuel tank, so it's absolutely perfect. Now, I have a trailer hitch that's hiding it, but up under here, it actually says Iron Rock Off-Road. You can see a glimpse of that it's uh, laser cut into the steel so if you don't have a hitch hanging down like I do right now it's gonna get changed eventually then that'll be a real sweet setup uh, from the back you'll see that iron rock off-road cut in there so like I said 100% bolt-on it uses the uh, factory bolts the same ones that these are actually studs that come out of the unibody and these are the same ones if you have a factory tow hitch or or an aftermarket you know tow package it's the same three studs and all you want to do is make sure you use some washers because some of these studs have built-in washers and you just want to make sure that you have a nice even little gap all the way down uh, if you try to just bolt it on without I think this is the one I had to put a washer on these two up here already have washers built in so if you don't use a washer up here it's gonna be real hard to tighten it you're gonna stress the, the nut and the bolt out uh, because the steel is so thick it's not going to want to flex you got to keep that nice even gap all the way across super easy to install let me go over to the other side just so you can get a good look at it um i did do it with a buddy it made it a lot easier because you'll you'll notice i mean like i said i took the factory one off i could do that by myself it was really light easy to move around this thing is way heavier i think it comes in at, at least 65 pounds so what I used was a jack and a piece of wood to get it up into place and then my buddy kind of helped situate this side, get it lined up on the studs while I did the other side and then we got it all snugged up and just kind of made our own rotation going back and forth around uh, to get everything tight until it was all nice and even. So you can see on this side too, nice and even, got the washer in there, nice even gap all the way down and it is on there solid. And these little relief cuts work out great for like pressure washing and things like that or if you go through a water crossing this will let the water drain out because you can see it's got a protective lip on the front too. So this lets the water drain out. Uh, it's awesome setup again 3 16 thick really beefy gonna protect that fuel tank skid and you know if you think that it's underrated I can tell you from experience my buddy Joel had a CJ7 out on the Rubicon trail took a hard hit to a plastic fuel tank and it screwed up the uh, fuel fuel pickup, which stressed out the fuel pump and killed it. So uh, we actually had to find a, a inline fuel pump from someone, an electric one, and and pull uh, fuel through that way. So definitely want to protect the fuel tank. Very important skid to have. So you can get this on their website. 
I believe the price is somewhere around $200. It's worth every single penny, so check that out. I've uh, been really happy with all my Iron Rock off-road parts, so if you don't know already, if you're new to the videos, I've got the Iron Rock off-road long arm kits front and rear. Their subframes are amazing, okay? There's, there's people in this industry, you know, the off-road industry, there's shops and stuff who they're completely against bolt-on stuff because they do all custom fabrication. Even those guys look at this stuff and they go, man, that, that thing is amazing. They really did a number on the subframe. It goes up and over the drive shaft. It's super beefy. You know, everything is overkill as far as like the thickness of the steel. And that's what you want. They always do these nice laser cut. Uh, you know accents with their logo and their company name and stuff and it's fully adjustable so the lower control arms themselves are adjustable but even so they gave you two different mounting points so if you want to stretch the rear you've got more room you could go back to that further bolt hole there also same thing the uppers the upper arm itself is not adjustable but look how they're recessed into the subframe there's like at least eight uh, bolt holes in there so that you can control caster and again if you're stretching the rear out further you can control all of that with the subframe it also helps to strengthen the unibody structure because it's going across those unibody rails now i do have their frame stiffeners that are weld on they'll actually go on the uniframe uh, the unibody basically from uh, that point just to the right of the camera all the way back so i've got those i'm going to be putting those on that'll help make the unibody structure you know even more rigid so uh, just giving you a good look their control arms super thick um, they're they're heavy I mean every box that you get from Iron Rock off-road you can tell it's just super thick super beefy steel also I don't know how well the cameras picking it up but they are bent for rock clearance so let me get under here they actually bend in toward the vehicle you can see the uppers do too they bend in toward the center and the lowers bend up so that you get more clearance. You're not dragging them across rocks all the time. I'm also running Iron Rock off-road springs front and rear. The rear I'm doing uh, XJ coils. And I want to say their, their spring rates are firm. They're definitely over 200, which is great. I'm not running sway bars, so the firmer spring rate really helps with handling and body roll. I believe these are XJ 3.5 inch. Don't quote me on that. Check the website, projectzj.com. I've got a, a you know build sheet on there that's got the info. So basically the whole thing is, you know, running a running an XJ coil in the rear, it gives you more height than advertised for an XJ. Um, because you're, you know, obviously an XJ only has coils in the front. You're running it in the rear of a ZJ. So if you buy a three and a half inch XJ coil, it's not going to give you three and a half inches when you put it in the rear of a ZJ it's actually going to give you uh, more, more lift. So as far as uh, nine or eight, and I can tell, I'm somewhere around probably six and a half inches of lift. And in the front, I'm also running Iron Rock off-road coils. These are their ZJ coil. I believe it's a four and a half inch, but obviously I have more than four and a half inches of lift. I have this JKS uh, ACOS, they call it adjustable coilover system. You can see I've taken out the adjustment ring. This is the base ring. Normally there's an adjustment ring down here and uh, you can you know, move it up and down this threaded thing. I took it out because I was just dialing in my height and I wanted to leave these on in case I ever need the adjustability later. So these are the ZJ coils from Iron Rock Off-Road. I believe they're a four and a half inch. Again, check the website for sure. And the spring rate's been helping out. Now I also have their uh, long arm kit in the front. So again, you get an awesome subframe. It's a three-piece subframe, and a lot of people say, well, why would you want a three-piece subframe? Real easy, guys. When you're working on it in the garage or if you're out on the trail you need to do a trail fix, if you have to drop the transmission or the transfer case, you don't have to mess with the control arms. The control arms stay bolted to the unibody. You drop the center section, and now you can do whatever you need to quickly and easily with the transmission and the transfer case. Okay, again, beefy control arms. You can see I've got some rock rash on these. Normally I sand them down and paint them after every trip. I'm going to have to do that. And again, you can see the bend in them for rock clearance. It's trying to give you uh, room near those tires so you're not bashing these on rocks more than you need to. Okay. Also, 
bolted on to the back of their subframe. This is a separate piece. It's not part of the long arm kit. Completely bolt on. This is the Iron Rock Off-Road Belly Skid. This thing's gonna protect your transfer case. It's gonna protect your exhaust. Very important. And you can see, I haven't had this very long, and I've already smacked it on the side that the transfer case is on. I'd much rather be smacking this big heavy piece of steel than my transfer case and just crack that thing open. I have seen those things literally crack open like an egg. You hit them just the wrong angle on, on the wrong rock and your whole weekend is ruined for sure. So awesome to have. You can see it's a bolt-on application just like the rear. It's bolt-on. You just do some drilling. You put some grade 8 nut plates inside the uniframe and then the grade 8 hardware bolts right to it. Same thing here and then it bolts to the back of the three-piece subframe. Awesome kit. Now let me go over to the other side and show you what they call the Iron Y. So basically it's it's real similar to a three link setup. It's not a true three link because there's only two links. This is called the Iron Y. It's one piece. So on the passenger side you can see you don't have an upper control arm. That's going to reduce any binding. It's going to allow you to flex more. And this Iron Y the upper portion of this is what controls your caster. Okay, so again, super beefy. And then, you know, look at these awesome welds. And then you got this cool touch here with the laser cut CNC. So, what I ended up doing though, by the way, while we're here, these are Iron Rock Off Road Bar Pin Eliminators. And those are Doge Tech uh, 8000 Pre Runner shocks, also from Iron Rock Off Road with integrated bump stops. These things have just under 14 inches of flex. You can get them from ironrockoffroad.com and check projectzj.com for the part numbers because I've got it pretty much dialed in for a ZJ with these ones. Um, I'm running those front and back. But what I ended up doing, it comes with this caster plate. I wish I would have brought it with me. And the caster plate that they use, a lot of people you know, have a lot of negative things to say about it, but honestly, it works. I've had it for years on here didn't have any problems. The thing I didn't like about it, you can see it's now been removed. Uh, I'll talk about this right now. But the thing I didn't like about it was it has a 10 millimeter bolt. And that's the only bolt like controlling the caster of the axle. And so, you know, going off road, doing trails like the Rubicon, I'm always just a stickler. Like I want grade eight hardware. I don't like to use factory hardware. And I want at least like a half inch. Most of my stuff is three quarter inch. Um, so what I ended up doing, I went over to my buddy Chad's house and we did two things. This bushing in here, I wish you could get a better look, of, look at it. It's a flex joint from Iron Rock Off-Road. Awesome flex joint too. It uses eight Allen bolts. They're recessed in so you get full misalignment, I think at least 30 degrees. And so what I was doing is I was stressing out the factory rubber bushing up here and cracking them. And so even if the caster plate wasn't slipping around, it was uh, basically giving me variable angles of caster, which affects your handling drastically. So what I ended up doing, I got rid of that factory rubber bushing, pressed this awesome flex joint in there. It's all greased up. Now this can move as much as it needs to, even though there's a flex joint on the other side of the iron Y. If this needs to move, it can now. It's not gonna stress out a rubber bushing and crack it and start messing with my caster setting. Also, you can see this uh, adjustable sleeve here. That was part of, this is where the uh, caster plate bolted on. So it gives you adjustability while you're trying to figure out your lift height and you know how far you're gonna stretch the front and everything like that. It's great to have adjustability. But once you're dialed in like I am and you just want a static caster uh, adjustment basically you know what degree you want to be at for handling and to reduce driveline vibrations and you don't want it to ever change then what you can do is this we didn't modify the iron Y at all other than drilling it out this slot is for a 10 millimeter bolt we pushed ours all the way back and then once we had it where we wanted we drilled the back section of this sliding slot out for a half inch bolt then what Chad did is he went ahead and welded a grade 8 nut to the iron Y. So now all I have to do is run the bolt through on the other side. I only need one wrench. But because you know he's into serious stuff like he he builds cage crawlers and things like that. He's always flipping them over and everything. He likes to do overkill. 
so we put another nut on here too just to reinforce make sure that weld you know nothing could ever give on this so now i have a hundred percent static caster setting it's not ever going to move and i have a half inch grade 8 bolt going through there instead of the factory 10 millimeter bolt so that's an awesome modification you can do to your iron rock kit once you figure out where you need to be because keep in mind this is static it's not going to change so if you lift it later and you need to change your caster setting with this setup you're going to have to do some cutting and grinding um, to get it back off to where you could use the caster plate or get it in the position that you need to okay so iron rock off-road everything that i've had from them has just lasted i mean i haven't had any problems with anything i also have their uh onboard air compressor in the back that thing's been awesome there's a separate video on that check that out just everything that i've bought from them has lasted rubicon multiple years you know beating the crap out of this thing out on the trail zero problems the only problem i ever had is just it's not even their fault i got a bad bushing on an upper control arm in the rear i told them about it they sent me a new one awesome company great customer service awesome products especially if you're a bolt-on kind of guy these things just go on they fit perfectly they are designed for this jeep you're not going to have to do any modifications to get them on throw it on and flex like crazy the suspension geometry is all figured out for you you're not going to have any crazy unloading or anything like that it's going to handle great on the street it's going to drive all the way to the trail flex all over the trail and drive all the way back home you're not going to be bending stuff every weekend when you hit a rock with your control arms iron rock off-road is solid stuff www.ironrockoffroad.com tell them project zj sent you so that's it for this video guys main thing was i wanted to show you that fuel tank skid it's awesome make sure you get a hold of one Hopefully some of you guys got a hold of the Christmas special we were running, so watch out for that kind of stuff around Christmas and New Year's. A lot of times Iron Rock Off-Road will contact me and uh, we'll run a special sale, like a promo price. So keep your eyes out for that. Alright guys, check out ProjectZJ.com and I'm going to do another video right now, so stay tuned for more updates. See ya.